Hello and welcome to round three of the Supercar Challenge powered by Pirelli. We're at the Baking Spa Francochon where all the GT and Touring Car classes are combined, making for a grid of over 60 cars, from the most powerful Super GTs down to the sports class. We'll take a look at the highlights of Sunday's race, but first here's what happened in Saturday's encounter. There was the extra challenge for the fastest 30 cars of setting a good time in qualifying, with the slower cars in the other divisions also on track. Leaving his bad luck from the Nürburgring behind him, it was the Swedish liveried Volvo of Henry Zumbrink who set pole for both races. The David Tech engineering team have solved their problems, it would seem. Next to him on the front row, the RaceArt SRT Viper GT3R. It's the only one in Europe and they're eager to score more points after their win and second place last time out in Germany. As the cars start their warm-up lap for race one, Paul Bailey's Aston Martin Vantage is struggling to get going, but there's worse for Kelvin Snooks. He was supposed to start fourth. His engine was damaged during qualifying and he's not ready to take the first start of the weekend. Problems too for Hank Tace. His V8-powered Radical RXC has pushed off the grid despite winning in the Nürburgring. It's all over here at Spa-Francorchamps before race one gets underway. Rolling up for the start then, we're on board with Bob Herbert in fifth position. Right in front is Paul Bailey's Aston Martin. Oh, good start from Herber as well as the lights change. Really on the boil with the Ferrari. He's through. He's chasing the leaders. Heavy braking down into La Source. Around the outside, Iron van der Swan in the SRT Viper leaves him behind. So we're up into second place already. And there goes Henry Zumbring's Volvo speeding down the hill into Eruz for the very first time. Oh, full tank's got to have a little lift there and control it. Not going too far to the left. That'll incur a penalty up the Kemmel straight. And look, the Volvo is pulling away and right behind. Here comes the Viper. This is where horsepower counts like nowhere else, perhaps in racing. And straight by goes the Viper. The Ferrari has to get on the brakes a fraction earlier at Les Combe and gives up second place on the outside line. Well, that's the order early on in the race with the Viper looking even quicker than our race leader, Henry Zumbrink but he's soon back in the pit lane. A water pump belt has snapped, it seems. And by the time he gets into the pits, the engine's run at over 200 degrees. Race one is over, but has it cooked their weekend as well as broken the belt? Nou, we gaan uh, straks als de motor afgekoeld is, gaan we kijken, compressie kijken. Uh, ja, of When the, the engine's cooled off, says Iron, we're going to measure the compression, uh, see if it's still okay. Uh, if so, then hopefully we'll be ready for race two, as long as it's okay. But if the engine's dead, it's definitely over for the weekend. We don't have a spare engine, so everything crossed. We're hoping it'll work. Well, unfortunately, the engine is scrapped. They'll have to enter race two in a different car. Henry Tumbrink, meanwhile, takes race one victory half a second ahead of Louis Marshalls in the air, of course, of Ferrari. He also takes second in the championship. Spa is such an amazing track to race at, says Henry. I never managed to win here in my GT4 Supercar Challenge seasons. In race one, everything went according to plan. I got pole almost a second ahead of the second guy, won the race. Turned out to be quite a close call in the end, but it was a great race. So success for Henry Zumbring's Volvo, but for the winner of the last Super GT race at the Nürburgring, Kelvin Snooks, no such fortune. His engine died in qualifying. He wasn't able to find a replacement car for race one. So for race two, he's in the DKR engineering BMW Z4. He's not even driven a lap in this car. His season is getting tougher and tougher. Is this disaster in the making or will he show his true racing skills? They're having to teach him how the instruments work and the steering wheel controls as well. In addition, because he's in a different car, he'll start 12th on the grid. Well, lots of engine problems at Spa. The Vecora V8, Bohas and Vinen and Masson, both out with broken engines. Renny Vinen starting in a Seat Leon Supercopa. Not the best choice among the powerful Super GT cars, so he decides he's going to leave the grid and start from the pit lane. High temperatures, high humidity, 28 degrees air temperature, 41 degrees track temperature. It's an hour-long race around the seven-kilometer track, and it's going to be highly punishing for the drivers. Henry Zumbrink on pole from Nick Homerson. Behind the Ferrari, Rene Vinen in a Seat Leon. He heads into the pits to avoid the carnage, and that means that fifth place Bob Herber has got a gap in front. Will he make another exceptional getaway? Yes, he does. Look at that. Really gets the hammer down fast. 
Sunbrink under pressure from two Ferraris now. The black car, Nick Homerson, that was second in race one. And Bob Herbert on the inside. Great exit from him. And looking fourth, the white nose. That is the Lamborghini of Peter Dubois, the GT leader now. He's up to fourth place. Down the hill into Eau Rouge for the first time. Here the split is chattering on the ground as they power through and up the Camel Strait. What a majestic sight, this massive field of cars. Up the Kemmel Strait, slipstreaming the leader with Bob Herbert. Sombrick going a little defensive, but he doesn't think the Ferrari's close enough. And he's right at Lake Combe. Oh, no, he's not. He gets in too deep. And Herbert almost grabs the lead. Right behind him there is Nick Homerson. Fourth place, still the Lamborghini, but that's under pressure from Paul Bailey's Aston Martin now. Into Brussels, it's Sumbrink, then Herber and Homerson, then Dubois and Bailey. There's the black car of Kelvin Snooks, Hank Tease in the GT car right behind. Mark Nines leads GTB in his Porsche. Coroy's a super sport leader in the Lotus Evora, and Evan van Dyke leads the sport class. Well, this is where Henry Sumbrink nearly lost the lead on lap one. Too hot into Le Combe, and Bob Herbert just couldn't quite squeeze around. Now Sundbrink easing away, Herbert defending second from Nick Homerson in the black Ferrari. And the battle behind rages up to the bus stop as well. It's going to be very close. Paul Bailey's Aston Martin just in front of GT leader Pierre Dubois in the Lamborghini. Then both BMWs, Kelvin Snooks the black one and Niels Bohaus up to Le Combe. There's the black BMW, Snooks looking to go around the inside line into Le Combe. He gets by the Lamborghini and that makes him fifth place overall now. Well, maybe he ought to try cars he's never driven before. Look, straight out, down in the inside line, into Rivage, Brussels as it's known now. And he goes by Paul Bailey for fourth place. And that's where he'll remain, right up to the mandatory stop, halfway through the race. Overshoots a little, that delays him. Then the strict refueling rules, only fuel going in, and you have to do any other work apart from that separately. He's got less results second than the leading trio, and he will end up in front of Louis Marshalls in the black Ferrari chasing Martin Lanting for second place. So here we go. Oh, Machiels comes around the BMW. Well, he didn't get the drive there, did he? Lanting gets away in front. Battle for third place then. Snooks on the inside line. Louis Machiels trying to work away round in the Ferrari. Running down the hill towards Eau Rouge. The Ferrari's got great traction off the corner. Calvin Snooks just with a little overlap. Oh, this is going to be brave indeed. Snooks keeps his nose in front. Does he stay clean on the exit? He does. And so too does our camera car. Snooks now down into Rivage. Herbert goes defensive. This is for second place. Henry Zumbrink still leading in the Volvo that won race one. But Calvin Snooks all over Bob Herbert. He's going to go the long way around the outside speaker's corner. Ooh kicked up the dirt all four wheels off track might give him a penalty especially as he picked up a place there he's not the only one running wide the set of Niels Bohaus also gets a warning from the stewards yeah Ferrari film it top snelight the Ferrari had much better top speed said Calvin that makes it really hard to overtake here at Spa he was driving really well too defending at every chance I got to go by so I tried everything and Bruxelles had a really great exit had more speed out of the corner it was a bit do or die in the next corner I really wanted to get by it worked out though so I got second from him Andy Schultz's weekend started with engine worries in the Aston, ended with a fine pass at the bus stop to take fourth away from Louis Machiels as Henry Zumbrick ran off to win the second of the weekend, 30 seconds clear of Kelvin Snooks. And the battle for third coming down to a dramatic last corner in the bus stop. The Aston Martin of Andy Schultz bumps up the inside of Martin Lansing, squeezes him out of third place just as Jan Verslice did last year. Dramatic stuff. Yeah, I think it was a fair move um, initially, and obviously, you know, around the outside into the chicane was, was good, into the bus stop. Um, and as we ran up the bus stop, I gave him lots of room on the outside. But of course, as we go to turn in, we both outbreak ourselves, really, and can't get it turned in. So it's very difficult there. So there's a little bit of contact, but I went down and shook his hand and said, look, it wasn't intentional. So it's just a difficult place to try and get through, you know. So things happen. And... Um, I think he's okay with it. It's very difficult to lose third place on the last corner of the last lap. It's very frustrating. I've been there. And uh, yeah, it just happens sometimes. Yeah. 
And the stewards saw no reason to change the result. So the Astons stayed third, the BMW of Snooks in second, but our happy winner for the second time, Henry yeah, Sumbrink. It's uh, absolutely fantastic, said Henry. Yesterday at the start, it was a bit off the stay close to me, but today I managed to open a gap built on my lead. But near the end, it got a lot harder. I had a good lead, but the tyres were shot. The heat here has been astonishing. The tyres were really sliding, lost all their grip. So it was pretty intense at the end. Two poles, two wins, the perfect weekend for Henry Zumbrick, the new championship leader. Kelvin Snooks in a borrowed car, second place. Third and fourth in the championship, though, had trouble with the cars that they'd borrowed, finishing at the back, but enough to keep themselves still in the title race. In the GT class, Craig Wilkins had the beating of the 458 Ferrari of Patrick van der Schlabeke at the start, but Frederick Jonkera overhauled Aaron Scott to claim victory in the second stint. Well, we've now got 2 minutes 20 stationary in the pit lane that results seconds, he said. There's a lot of work to do after the pit stops, but that'll make it more exciting, more competitive, and we'll be pushing hard as always. Well, GT pole sitter for race two, Patrick van Klabakert starts from the outside of row three on the full grid. Peter Dubois doing the first stint on the inside of row four. Craig Wilkins inside row five. Well, we're with Peter Dubois in the Lamborghini Gallardo. Right in front of us, Bob Herbers Ferrari. And away we go. On the right hand side, the blue car. Now on the left of your picture, that's the race leader. But look at the Lamborghini, the white nose, blue car up the inside. At last horse, he's in fourth place. Bob Herber goes through into second. Well, that's a great start from Peter Dubois in the Lamborghini Gallardo. Down into Eau Rouge. Oh, so fast. And even these cars lose speed on the way up the hill. It's so steep out of Redion. Battling with the cars in Super GT, this the red Aston Martin of Paul Bailey and Andy Schultz, and comfortably leading the GT class until this moment at La Source, the hairpin, where he loops it round and gives away the lead of the class. Yeah, it ging van the one kant ging it heel goed. Well, everything was going great, but I was pushing too hard, I think, really degrading the tyres, asking too much of myself, maybe. I took a few too many risks, keeping up with the cars in front, spun at La Source, and we lost around a minute, and that's a bit of a shame. Well, back to lap one, Craig Wilkins getting a great run out of Eau Rouge, overhauling Patrick van Glabeke for second place. But as they get into the braking area at Le Combe, you can see how hard Wilkins is pushing, leaves dark stripes on the road, under braking and under acceleration, and that is not going to be great for tyre life on the Viper. Craig Wilkins hands over the leading car to Aaron Scott, and Frederick Jonker are doing the second stint in the Ferrari, finally runs them down and will take victory in race two. A problematic weekend for Hank Tace in the Radical, again failing to finish here, but guest driver Philip Daniels does, shows the car can be quick and reliable in third spot. The fourth win for Patrick van Klabeke and Frederick Jonkera means that they now extend their championship lead to 16 points ahead of Craig Wilkins and Aaron Scott in the Viper. And despite not even being at the first round in Sanford, Dubois and Verstrata are moving up the rankings fast. GTB Championship leader Dan Meyer had to start from the back of the grid after electrical problems in qualifying. With 16 cars in the class, Corvette drivers Ferdinand Kuhl and Max Kubelt won their second race of the season in front of Meyer. But could they repeat that for race two as well? Well, it's much more humid, says Ferdinand. It's going to be quite tough and we've got 25 more results seconds than our rivals. So I'll have to push really hard from the beginning, but we're still aiming to get on the podium. Just like in race one, Mark Nyans in the black and white Porsche takes the lead in race two. Ferdinand Kuhl second in the Corvette. Marcel Berlo and Dan Meyer's Porsche is giving chase. Dan Meyer, the leader in the GTB Championship, grabs third place halfway to the pit stop window from Marcel van Berlo, demoting his fellow Porsche driver down to fourth. Ferdinand Kuhl closes the gap on Mark Nyans for the lead, but he's unable to get by and he knows that they've got major result seconds in the pit stops that aren't going to help. 16-year-old Max Kobalt takes over the David Zick engineering team, though cool, calm and collected. And as he leaves, that is the key to their success. EMG Motorsports sends out Patrick Lamster taking over from Mark Nyans too late. 
Cobalt up to speed, easily passes Lamster. The team go on to win race two, their third victory of the season. Well, they had tough luck in Zanfort race two with electrical failure. Race two in the Nürburgring with a loose wheel bolt. But now they've got a maximum points weekend. Victory in both races at Spa. Yeah, we saw a uh, flink aanvoer naar de pitstop. Wasn't easy, says Max. I really had to push hard. We weren't leading before or after the pit stop, so I had to hunt down the leader. Straight after the pit, so I gave it everything. And that turned out to be the successful strategy. Well, their double race winning weekend also give the Corvette duo the lead in the GTB standings. Next time out there at Zolder, where their Corvette should also benefit from its torque out of the slower corners. Stay with us here in Spa. The Supersport and Sport Divisions are up next.